We all love technology until it fails us. A computer crash is annoying, but a car crash can't be deadly. As cars become internet-connected supercomputers, what happens when they crash? My name is Stephanie Chan, and I'm the editor of Globe Drive. I'm Matt Bubbers, car critic and reporter for The Globe and Mail. In this series, we're going to explore the future of transportation by looking at the past and how we got here in the first place. Cars have been basically the same for more than a hundred years. But now, congested cities and climate change means the race is on to figure out what's next. Imagine you're in one of those cars down there. It's the near future, all the cars are connected via the internet to each other, even to that traffic light. What happens if one of those cars gets hacked or, it, or if all of them get a virus or the traffic lights get a virus? Your car could crash, all the cars. This could get dangerous. I appreciate the fact that you have these concerns. I've had experiences in cars where I've got literally a blue screen of death on the in-car screen. That was years ago. But what happens when that computer is connected to the steering, to the brakes? It could get bad, Stephanie. Right, but I mean, it's not like the internet is going away anytime soon. Like the cat is out of the bag and so is this technology. I mean, like it's already in our cars. It's just that they're called cruise control and lane assist right now, right. but it, it's not going away. Okay, now we made a trailer to show you just how bad this is gonna get. Roll this tape. In a world where cars are connected, okay. traffic is a thing of the past. But the cost of modern convenience it's is life as, as we, we know. know it. A single virus turns the vehicles against us and goes into overdrive. Who's that kid? <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay, we should probably back up and explain what a connected car is. For most of automotive history, cars were purely analog mechanical things. Connectivity meant AM radio. In the 1990s, cars got GPS picking up satellite signals. In 1994, this million dollar supercar, the McLaren F1, had a built-in dial-up modem to send diagnostic information to its factory in England, and that seems so cool. Then, in 1996, GM launched OnStar. Remember that? It was an analog mobile network connection that would notify emergency services when your car's airbags went off. Wireless car keys also became a thing around the same time. In the mid-2000s, cars got Bluetooth connections and then built-in SIM cards. Later that decade, they got 3G cellular data linking them to the internet. In 2012, Tesla sends out the first over-the-air remote software update for its cars. And now Apple CarPlay and Android Auto turn your dashboard into a smartphone, linking your car to the whole cloud-based app ecosystem, serving up Spotify music and Waze and all those other things. Okay, so, so I know this expert. We talked to her in the past before on other projects that we've worked on. I'm going to go to her and I'm going to take your concerns and we'll actually get an expert's view about connected vehicles and how it's all going to go down. We are waiting for Jospa Petronic. She basically spends 15 hour days advising different municipal governments and bodies on how to design um, transportation of the future. This is basically what my colleague Matt thinks the world's going to come to. And I just want your honest take on it. Okay, I'm going to press play. It's quite ominous in the idea that one virus could take out the entire transportation network. Probably not likely. It's not so easy as just saying, well, it could be one virus that brings us all down. There are so many possible sites that are vulnerable. Let's say you have a shuttle. That shuttle is on that road. 
As it's connected, it's communicating with the traffic lights, it's communicating with other vehicles around it, it's communicating with the buildings around it, it's also reading its surroundings through a combination of cameras and lidars and radars, so there's a lot of data. All of those sites of communication could be the site of malicious attack, possibly telling you that the road continues when in fact it's a brick wall. Now, is it all bad? No, because obviously there's the positive aspect, why are we doing this? Because we want to move more people faster over greater distances with less energy. We want to save the planet, we want to decongest our cities. So the reason we're doing it is to make life better. Toronto has probably taken the most proactive approach, but even Toronto does not have a cybersecurity roadmap in place for transportation. We are very far behind. It's really interesting that she said that about Toronto because Toronto of all places should have learned its lesson. While you were talking to her, I found out that in 1872, Toronto was the epicenter of one of the worst transportation catastrophes ever. Roll tape. Do we have tape for this? What's an epizootic? Okay, I, I've got a guy who can explain all this better than I can. You've got to come meet him. We're here on Young Street. What would this street have looked like back in the 1870s? We would see lines of horses pulling vehicles and street railway vehicles being pulled by horses. It would smell a lot different and it would sound a lot different. And so when the disease struck Toronto, one thing that people described regularly was how quiet streets sounded. Where exactly was ground zero of this great North American horse epidemic? It was somewhere along here, probably a building that's no longer here, but would have looked somewhat like some of these older heritage buildings that are still on Temperance Street. So the Ontario Veterinary College was kind of the epicenter. October 1872, horses in the city of Toronto started falling sick. And it turned out to be the beginning of what would be a years long epidemic of a horse disease that would spread from Toronto to as far west as San Francisco and as far south as Havana in Cuba. New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, all of these cities use horses to get around. This disease strikes and it wipes out all of the horses in the city for about two to three weeks. It doesn't kill a lot of them, but it makes them too sick to work, which means that there's no street railway service, there's no delivery of goods or services throughout the city, and suddenly a city becomes entirely pedestrian. Imagine the city of Toronto today with all of the gasoline removed and every single car is pulled off the streets and the subway system is shut down and the GO train system is shut down. There were estimates that this ended up costing some of the larger cities hundreds of millions of dollars in lost business as a result of the collapse of the transportation system. Okay, now I'm freaked out. <laughs> we didn't learn anything for the past again. Could that yeah. same thing happen now? After all of this was over, it was almost like nothing changed. Mm. No legislation was passed. Like, how do you keep horses quarantined? Why not? And actually that yeah. reminds me of a conversation that when I was asking Josipa about what the legislation actually is like right now around autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. in Canada. So in Canada, the federal government, to its good credit, uh, over the last few years has initiated a safety standards a road mapping activity to make sure that connected, automated, shared and electric mobility is safe and secure for Canadians. So they're doing that right now. Is that produced? No. Does it exist yet? No. Does it exist anywhere in North America? No. There actually have been some car hacks. Most famously, these two guys hacked a Jeep and they shut down its engine remotely while it was on the highway. The result, 1.4 million vehicles were recalled to fix that vulnerability. Okay, so for your next assignment, Matt, <laughs> I send you off to go try to hack some cars. I'll do my best.
now we're here at Blackberry and we're gonna check out car hackers. Restricted area. The CEO of Jaguar Land Rover said cybersecurity was as, as important as brakes. This is all the stuff that's like behind the dash of Correct. your normal car. Correct. But now it's just out there so we can kind of play with it. Exactly. Maybe 10% of cars are connected and you know, very near term will be 90 to 100%, let's mm -hmm. say five years. So as more cars become connected, the attack surface goes way up. You, know, you have the ability to actually go from the cyber domain into physical real life now, taking an individual target off the road. That is a potential. But what it'll, I think you'll find is that malicious actors uh, really will actually maybe go after a, a particular vehicle, yeah. a particular person. A car has more and more software, and it will start ha having more and more user information. If that gets hacked and gets stolen, it can actually steal your identity. I just want to pause that video there for a second and explain. The BlackBerry guys were showing me technology that prevents an owner from accidentally installing a malicious app. Now I'm going to take a malformed app, something that actually has something, some bad things inside it. So if you click on that inject malicious APK button, it's actually going to take that application and try to backdoor install it onto the Android. Cool. Are you getting this, Sean? I'm about to do my first hack. Yep. <laughs> okay. First hack. App install blocked. What? You gotta be kidding me. I was supposed to hack a car when I came here, but it's good to know there's already software in cars that's gonna start preventing some of these attacks. Cars are very safe because there's been regulations and care put into making them safe. We need to follow that same methodology to keep that safety as we connect them. Yeah, you thought BlackBerry was just those phones with the keyboards, but no, so much more. I've taken off my tinfoil hat and I'm feeling a bit better that like the car apocalypse we showed in the beginning, probably not gonna happen. Yeah, and I obviously definitely need to meet you in the middle and that we talked to so many people and they all agreed that, oh yes, this is something that could happen if the right steps aren't taken. The outbreak of this horse disease in 1872 shows what could happen. You should make sure your software is being updated, that you know, look for the vulnerabilities, query the security of the vehicle that you're buying. If the end goal is to move people and make cities more livable and improve our lives, then it's worth going through these technological hurdles. 